just so exciting for me to hear that something like the Crisis Text Line exists because when I worked on the hotline, I would, one of the ways that we would know that somebody was in crisis is they would text a friend or maybe they would post something about it on social media. And then we would try to talk to them about it and they wouldn't be open to talking about it. And it was frustrating to me. I felt like, wow, if we had a way for people to be able to just text into us, maybe we could have some more real conversations. Crisis Text Line was what's called an edge case. It was born of the rib of something else. I was the CEO of DoSomething.org. Everything was going great, lots of kids doing lots of great things. We communicated with them largely by text. And then kids started texting us about their personal issues. And we would triage it with like, here's a hotline number, or maybe you should talk to your mom or your school principal or things like that. And, and then we got a message that was so horrific that um, it made us pause and made me realize that there was just, we had to build something. I think the most innovative thing about us is the data and how we use the data. We are uh, collecting um, all the conversations and actually learning from them over time. So the goal is not only to provide a great service in the moment to every texter that comes in, but can we actually improve the quality of our service over time? We've processed more than 30 million messages going back and forth, and we knew before we launched that the data was going to be juicy. And so we have the volume, velocity, and variety to have a really valuable data corpus there to learn from, to make us faster and more accurate. You can see the actual language that texters are using and therefore understand how the moment of crisis is unfolding. Based on the words that you text in, we place you in the queue. And so um, we originally built this with the words, you know, suicide, die, um, overdose. And if you text in those words, we make you number one in the queue and we take you really fast because we want to make sure that we get to you. And then we added a machine learning layer and saw that there are actually thousands of what are called n-grams, bigrams, and trigrams. So words and word combinations that are higher imminent risk than the word suicide. The best indicators of a high risk event is uh, something that almost every uh, household has. It's an over-the-counter drug, ibuprofen. So if ibuprofen occurs in the start of a conversation for a texter, that texter is 16 times as likely to end up needing an active rescue. If you say those words, we know you not only have the idea to thinking about suicide, you not only have a plan, but you have the means and you've, it's imminent. You've got the timing because it's right in your medicine cabinet or right in your drawer next to the bed. It's right there. We want to share this data out so it's not just helping us, it's helping the space as a whole. It's helping academics who do research on these issues that have a lot more donate domain expertise than we have, making sure they have valuable um, data sets that they can drive insights from. People often think of Crisis Text Line as a tech startup, and that's true, we are. But what we really are at our core is a community of empathy MVPs. So it's an opportunity for people to be able to text in, talk about what's going on with them without a friend saying, oh, you know, let me tell you about myself or let me tell you what to do. We're really just there to listen, to be supportive. 65% of people who text us tell us that they've shared something with us they've never shared with anyone else before. This is a safe space to share those things. And I'm, I'm proud of that and I'm also super bummed because it should be okay to share these things with your family, with your friends, with your classmates, with your teachers, with your coworkers. There's a lot of stigma around mental health in America. Um, and it prevents people from getting the care that they need and the care that they deserve. Sometimes even this is a great starting point, right? They come, they can talk to us anonymously about that, and then that empowers them to feel like they can go and have that conversation with a parent or with a close friend in real life. We've de-escalated a lot of situations. We've helped a lot of people remember how strong they are in crisis moments. Um, we've helped nudge people to a path that's safe. Um, and it's strangers helping other strangers. Like there's kind of nothing more beautiful.